Hey guys, I'm back. I hope you guys are good. So, welcome to another Harmonious Mind Chat. And today we're going to be talking about political ideologies, a bit of philosophy behind it. And this, well, this video is basically to evoke thought, higher level thinking, enlightenment, you know, connecting the dots, common sense thinking, you know. So, ideology. So, I have my peanuts, so I'm having my little snack. So, ideologies are a system of ideals and ideas, ways of thinking, and in politics, political theory, ideology is used to push agendas to what we envision this you know what we are envisioning in society or this ideal of society that we are envisioning or the as a whole you know the new society that you know we're envisioning so yes now i'm going to get on to the specific ideologies have my notes so so i'll start off with liberty libertarianism <laughs> i can't talk today <laughs> libertarianism is free society no government intervention all right free society no government intervention and you have republicanism which is when a leader is chosen by the masses and you know he gets his authority from below he or she gets their authority from below this is that social construct this is a bit aligned with the social construct that you you know that john locke was talking about you have conservatism conservatism seeks to maintain tradition um, a lot of times in this way of maintaining tradition, it maintains the status quo. So, a society, I forgot, without no means is without change. There's a quote by Edmund Burke. I think that's the quote. But basically, conservatism is not, is not really where it's at when you're trying to you know get to get some change you know so that's why our candy is calling y'all conservatives because y'all basically are for maintaining the status quo because conservatism seeks to maintain tradition all right so socialism socialism is state state owns the means of production that is what is included with socialism. Interference is used to limit risk. All right, communism, government controls the system to eliminate risk, no private ownership. All right, so when we're talking about socialism and communism, I mean, specifically right now in the States, the reason why there's all this talk about socialism and how you know some older because really the younger generation millennials and gen z a lot are for socialism and then you know you'll have other people who are not and the reason is most likely the reason tends to be because socialism in the stages you have socialism and then next is communism and people don't want to see that transfer to the next stage onto communism so that's why you have democratism within that word democrats and that meaning of that word you know democrat if you look up you know what that meaning is as far as like latin was it is it basically means like it is connected to a working party 
So I think Democrat or something is connected to, I'm not exactly sure like what the Latin prefix is, you know, exactly, but it is connected to working party when you look into the meaning. And democratism is for social equality, the right of all people to participate in government. So, yes. Yeah, that's that's all for a democracy, really, yeah. Oh, the right, you know, the rule of the majority. And you have fascism. So fascism is aligned with militarism, nationalism, autocracy, and dictatorial leadership. And a lot of times in fascism, you will see an exalting of the nation above all, you know? And you kind of see that now with, you see that with the white supremacists. You see that with the, you know, mainly the white supremacists, yeah. Them. You see that with them being nationalists and talking about make America great again. Like, you see that exalting of a nation above all. This idea of state and a nation and how patriotism is aligned with that. So that's basically fascism. And in fascism, there will be forcible suppression against the opposition. So you will definitely see that. And if you just think about it, we see some fascist behavior in the government. If you think about it, you know, you and you know forcible suppression and uh, militarism are in tandem when you think about what occurred at the protest bringing in military well not well talk about bringing in military bringing in you know basically the ops on my end, the ops, you know, police, military, bringing them in to basically suppress and try to really put their foot down on the uprising and the discontent that people have and just the uproar, you know. So those are the political ideologies that I'm going to speak on. So first, we'll well, next, we'll talk about polis and what the meaning of polis is before I get into, you know, what Aristotle said. Polis is state, city, and, you know, when you're speaking of state, when you're speaking in terms of state, we're really speaking in terms of government, you know, when you're speaking in the terms of less modern con you know less modern language your state is government so aristotle you know one of the greek philosophers from way 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 back and i'll always say question everything you know because he was shown to be white but we don't even know we don't, we don't really know, you know? So, but Aristotle said, polis is not created by those similar in kind. So those who created the government are not similar in kind to all those people within, you know, within the system or the people as a whole, you know? the working people, working class, you know, etc. I'm filming. Huh? Yeah, I'm filming. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll talk to you later. I know it's weird seeing me film. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, polis is not created by those similar in kind. 
polish is not created by those similar in kind. That is, you know, if you look within these philosophical texts, there's little things that are like, they're just gonna be yelling at you because this government was not created by those similar in kind. And if you think about it, it wasn't created for us. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> you know, and if you think about it, the Democratic Party was a working party. And usually when it came to the working party, we were a part of that, but we were a part of that under ownership, you know? The working party was really the people that had ownership of us, you know? The, or, you know, you had the agrarians and you had the plantation owners, etc. So, I mean, there's, there's so many, things that you can really get into as far as when you're really thinking about polis is not created by those similar in kind if you look at just the constitution the constitution was not really created for you know today's america and it definitely wasn't created for for the black nation it was definitely not so you know, because at the time the Constitution was written, we were an asset, you know, property. So, you know, that is another supporting statement for, you know, polis is not created by those similar in kind. Okay, so I'm going to move on to Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine... He wrote the pamphlets that were used. One of them were common sense. Used, I think, it was the year of 1776, and it was an advocacy of the Revolutionary War for them to really break free from Britain. So there's an, like a little quote from Thomas Paine that I had, you know, I wrote a paper on, you know, what I believe he meant by this, and you know, you know, the socio-political, socio-economic climate. And um, what he said was, heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange Indeed, if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. So first off, I'll say, I mentioned Thomas Paine in another video, the Control Harmonious Chat video. You can discount me mentioning him, you know, because I couldn't remember verbatim what the quote said and I mean he was speaking of metaphysical freedom yes but you can really discount what I said now what he's saying highly rated freedom is highly rated and he coincides that with being you know there's a price Um, I'm sad in that because you know I didn't re I didn't remember the whole exact excerpt when it came to my mentioning of him before, but this particular statement, nah, I'm getting some European Asili mixed in it, and I'm not fucking with it. Freedom is a birthright. What are you talking about? Price. All right. So, nah. But this is 
just something to add in to the puzzle for that higher level thinking. Because this is someone, Thomas Paine's you know, pamphlets contributed to the Revolutionary War. These, this is an ideology. This is, you know, a, you know, a form of thought that contributed to the formation of, you know, what we have today. You know, what, what's going, you know, what the government is today and, you know, America, you know, it being colonies to an independent state. All right, so we're gonna get into the dangerous world model, all right? So this has to do with like power and hegemony and in politics and political theory, power is basically getting A to do what B wants, or getting B to do what A wants. And in this dangerous world model, you're going to see, I'm going to let you know where power comes in, or how power is maintained. So in the dangerous world, so I'll use current times in, you know, to apply to this. In the dangerous world, so align that with COVID, and then you have the fear that was ignited with, you know, the uncertainty, dying, you know, being sick, you know, and with that, it's used to seek control, and you can see that with vaccinations that they're trying to, you know, get out here then the fact that you have to show that you've been vaccinated on your phone and have it scanned or whatever, and then being, you know, scanned when, before entering a facility to make sure you are healthy, you know, another way of seeking control, don't plant any seeds, don't be growing your own food, you know? and within this seeking control, there's triggers. And then, you know, you go back to the dangerous world. So if you think about it, here's another example, dangerous world, HIV, the fear. Then you had, you know, they say it's incurable, but there's like all this expensive treatment. So this is another way to seek control and keep you in the system keep you in going along and keep you playing into it you know and then you got the triggers you know and then you go right back to the dangerous world you know so this this particular model can be used for you know different scenarios and the last point I want to get into is you know this idea of mixed market economy and free market economy with little government intervention private ownership and if you really think about this the the large corporations you know food companies alec you know these companies that are Victoria's Secret, you know, these large companies, whether it's pharmaceutical, food, retail, whatever, industrial, you know, that, those companies are government funded. Some of them, you know, well, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them, <laughs> those are government funded. And affiliation is not far from intervention and when there's affiliation there has to be common interest interest so someone has to be getting both parties need to be getting something out of it there needs to be a reaping of benefits for both parties so that's why i say these there's no 
far off, you know, alignment when it comes to intervention, you know, it's affiliation. And affiliation is not far off from intervention. It's not. So that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so that's it. And this video was just to really, oh, I do wanna say one more thing when it comes to political competency because that's what really this video is about because a lot of not a lot of people know what these ideals are these I ideologies are and you know they have these politicians in front of them on the tv screen and they don't really know what they stand for they don't even know what ideology they stand for so this is really about political competency and when you get into political competency you want to think about why are the intellectuals treated with caution and suspicion and called conspiracy theorists by the government? All right, so I just hope, you know, I know this video was not very like, it was more just certain points to promote political competency and just higher level critical thinking so, I'm sorry if it was disorganized <laughs> or not as seamless as you would have liked. But, yep, that is it. Thanks for watching. Love, peace, blessings.